I had a great idea. I'm really happy about it. I know who's going to grade your homeworks. You guys will. Um, you know, I guess uh, I have wandered around these before, but I thought that there would be issues with uh, privacy and things like that. But that is not an issue if you grade your own homework, right? And my, um, how we call it, method of grading is very simple. Um, there's only three options. Uh, you either got it right, and that is not like, you know, final expression or the final number at the end, but the procedure is right. Um, it is somewhere there, but not quite, and it's wrong. Um, by wrong, I mean um, like you didn't attempt it, or um, you know, it was kind of just garbage written in there. I don't think that will happen in this class, you know. Uh, it happens in the intro mechanics, that the students just write down the formulas that they, you know, uh, have available or kind of were able to um, to see from the other people, but they have no idea. Um, and so that's why I think that everybody you know, is going to get an A in this class. But I think you you'll grade your homework. Is that okay with you? So um, maybe we can start with the first three or four, so I'll post the solutions and then you send me the, your scores by email. And uh, for the latest um, homeworks, problem sets, I do have solutions. So I will post those right away. Um, I got them from Leo Banuel, so that's good. Okay, so we looked at a We looked at a rigid body, last time, a rigid body that was uh, rotating, but without any torque acting on it. And it had, um, I guess, longitudinal symmetry. So it could look like that. Uh, maybe like that, right? So you have a moment of inertia that is like that, longitudinal. And then you have uh, two others that are equal. So it will be I1 and I1. These are in uh, orthogonal directions. And uh, with these simplifications, so I1 equals I2 different than I3. And the fact that there was no torque, uh, the problem became simple enough that we were able to solve it. And for the omega 1 and omega 2, uh, we get that the solution was actually just a simple harmonic oscillator. And so, so 
So the position for x was a cosine some angle over here, and y is a, let's put a negative in here, sine theta. So if the angle theta is this one, uh, cosine goes like this, and the sine function goes like this. So this goes from 1 to negative 1. Uh, well, actually, I guess it will be just this motion. And then y goes from 0 to, we have the negative, so it goes to uh, negative 1. And then to uh, 1. So this one will reach 0 over here and this one will reach negative one. And so you get the, the circle. So uh, it's just the, the simple harmonic oscillator. And so, you know, this is uh, looking at this object from above. So what, it's, what this is doing is that the, um, the axis of rotation, omega three, is moving in a circle like this. So it has a precession even though there's no torque uh, acting on this on this rigid body, so that's sort of some interesting some interesting uh, dynamics there. So now we're going to look at um, force. heavy uh, symmetric top and each one of these words has some meaning so force means that there is a torque so and uh, we're actually going to fix uh, one of the, the points so that you know, actually you actually have the torque and in the case that we're going to look at the torque is produced by gravity so you have like this okay I think it's some uh, Dog food, anyways. Um, it's going to be rotating like this, and you have gravity pointing down, so the torque is produced uh, over here. So it's going to be rotating. It's going to have a precession to it, as we will see. The torque is produced by gravity. And so the point over here has to be fixed in order for the torque to work, I guess, in a predictable way. Heavy, why would that matter? So if you look at, um, you know, tops, the one that, the ones that uh, kids play with, I guess maybe adults too can play with them. Uh, usually, what what is the material? Um, if you look at the plastic, is it like? Um, like a grocery store bag or more like you know, something heavier? Yeah. It's, pre it's pretty heavy, right, for, for being plastic. So what will happen if you make it very light? Hmm? Yeah. I mean, if it's like really, really, really light, then uh, even interaction with the atmosphere will um, affect its motion. Uh, if it's not uh, light enough, I guess, for that to happen, uh, you might still have, like, it will, like, wobble a lot, 
it will be kind of difficult to maintain the um, the spin. And so I guess you can make some simplifications if you assume that the top is rotating uh, very fast because then most of the um, angular momentum is going to be along this axis. So, you know, heavy, it's easier to, to predict. Symmetric, well, it's gonna have this symmetry uh, with two of them, two of the uh, principal moments of inertia being equal. And a top, um, I guess we can call it, you know, a, a rigid body at this point. Uh, but we're going to look like particularly at this kind of um, like mass distribution and everything. So you have a single point over here and then more of, a, of an area over here. So if you wanted to approximate it, approximate it with some um, regular figure, mm, how do you call it? This one. Cool. It's a cone, but is it a polygon? I think it's not a polygon, is it? Well, a cone, you know. <laughs> um, I think it will be the, the simplest uh, figure or solid that will approximate this shape. Um, I wonder, so what will happen if instead of this symmetry, you have something like like this. So instead of having a circle, you have a triangle. Um, will the physics still hold? If it's uh, equilateral, let's see. Um, so this is my. Um, so you will have the center of gravity over here, you know, I guess into the, the body. And so then I guess your axis will be like this. Uh, X and Y. Um, yeah, I think because the distribution of mass is different here than here, and you know, the moment of inertia is uh, our I squared. Uh, it's not going to have that symmetry. Um, if you have a square, I think uh, you would. So I guess uh, that's what those words mean. So I wanted to remove this. avoid uh, distractions and this one I'm gonna move it up a little okay so
Okay, so we have a plane over here. And this is going to be the Z prime axis. Uh, so this one is going to be y prime. This one is x prime. So the top is going to be in this direction. So maybe it's going to be through here, and then um, goes up. It's going to be there. Okay. So you have the component in x. Y and Z. So it's, it's kind of like this. This is going to be the center of mass of the top. So the torque is going to go from the origin and through this axis and through the center of mass. So this one is going to be the z-axis. And yeah, good. So how do we go from the prime to the unprime coordinate system? Rotations, which ones? Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so in this drawing, the prime system coordinate system is represents the uh, the system axis or the system coordinate system. And To describe the symmetric top, we only need, um, we can do it with just the unprime. So first thing is to define which uh, convention you're gonna use for the rotations, the transformation matrices. The book uses um, 313, and so that's what we're going to use also. Uh, what does it mean, 313? The thing of the extractor and the X. The, the new X and then the new Z, right? Okay. So this is going to give us the, uh, the other angles. Psi, theta, Phi. So the this axis we have to align it with the with the center of mass. So and we have control over over this one first, right? So we can rotate it like this, actually uh, counterclockwise, so like this. And then the other, the next knob is the one we are going to create over here. So it's gonna be over here, we rotate it like this. 
and then we rotate this one uh, again. Okay. I guess it's going to be over here. Yeah. So the second rotation. So the one about the uh, the new x-axis uh, has to move this one like this, right? The has to align the the two um, z-axis, z prime and regular or and and prime z. So the vector normal to the plane of rotation, or I guess it is easier to say that uh, is the axis of rotation ix um, is also the principal moment of inertia ix. So in order to do that, the first rotation has to align the the y prime, z prime axis uh, plane. with the center of mass. Okay, so that gives us the first two rotations. If it's in this direction, we have to move um, the x-axis. We're, we're gonna rotate this one. Um, Positive is counterclockwise, and so that means that this one is gonna also move counterclockwise. It's gonna move, let's say, over here. And this one, I'm gonna call it um, Psi. So I guess Greek X. And this angle over here, it's gonna be uh, phi. And then uh, we're going to rotate this one uh, counterclockwise. And so this is the second angle. Uh, this one is theta. And then It's going to be about this one over here. And so this is a rotation. Uh, well, this one is this one is theta. Um, the last one is like this and is psi. Okay, so if you think about it. Uh, psi doesn't really matter because it says, well, you know, um, I'm over here and psi not is over here, so I need to rotate it like this. But, uh, Side nut is arbitrary. So, you know, if it's a very, uh, if it's a, an abstract system, you don't really need it, you can define it. I guess, you know, if it's something that has more physical meaning, like, I don't know, where a planet was located in, you know, 1665 or something like that, then, you know, you can, you can do that. Um, 
but really that last one is arbitrary. What is not arbitrary, and you know we will see it in more detail, is psi dot. Okay, that one is not arbitrary. Um, so yeah, this is our system and how we rotate it. So there is that uh, psi is called the line of nodes. Why is it important? Or does it have its own name? If you have something like, let's say, you know, the you're, lo you're uh, looking at the solar system, you have uh, the Earth over here, and you know, it will create a plane uh, in which you will find both the Earth and the Sun. Um, and then maybe you have you know, some meteorite or you know, even like Pluto uh, that looks kind of like that. So the line of nodes this is one node, this is the other one. If you have two planes, they're going to intersect, well, two orbits, they're going to intersect in these two points. Um, and you can draw a line in between. And this one is the line of nodes. So it is the, it's the line of the intersection of two planes. So it's important in um, astronomy, but you, know, you can see that uh, it's important here also because it's one of your of your knobs. Okay, and so the third rotation, I'm I'm not showing it on the plane here, but it's just you know a knob. Okay, so. Then, based on this information, well, I guess just for completeness, uh, third rotation, is along or about, I guess. This Z axis in the unprime system. So then Psi is the rotation angle about its own uh, z-axis. Own or body. Um, theta. Oh, and Psi dot is how fast this the yes it's a spin. How fast it is rotating. The other one uh,
phi is the is the azimuth of the top. Um, about the vertical. And the vertical is uh, C prime. Okay, so anybody knows these angles used in astronomy? What are they? Altitude and what else? And that one, <laughs> the azimuth. So if I'm standing, standing right here, um, I guess to a first approximation, let me think about it. Yeah, so you can kind of assume that uh, it's flat. So this one over here, let's call it north. And north is an azimuth of zero degrees. And then you have east, south, and west, so this is 90, 180, 270, and you go back to 360 or zero. And the uh, zenith is straight up. And then you're going to so this is, this is one angle, it goes like this. And you have the other angle, which is the altitude. Um, so maybe we can draw it kind of like this. Um, so that it's over here. Oops, kind of like that. Um, so we're gonna have this one. This one is the altitude, and the other one, this one is the, the azimuth. So it's the same for this one. So it is, this one is how much we're rotating it with respect to some, um, some initial value, but you have to define you know, what is your north. And so, Phi dot gives you what kind of uh, speed or velocity? Look at what it's doing. So if you move it like this, it's gonna do this. What is it? Uh, or velocity, I guess. Okay, so this one is how fast it is spinning. This one is how fast it is uh, proceeding. And the last one, theta, what will it give you? It's the angle with respect to the vertical. Mutation, mutation. Um, so maybe I can put it over here. So theta is angle 
we uh, respect to the vertical and so let's see it's going to be Going to be proceeding like this and then spinning like this and this one is, is going to be doing this movement so it's like a rocking movement and if it's spinning really fast you usually don't see that it's just like this but as it starts to slow down you see the the wobble and so that movement is called the you mutation. mutation. Yeah. So then theta prime is how fast it is doing that. Cool. So the angles have some meaning, the yeah, the other angles. Um let's now draw the effect of gravity in there. So we can this is going to be two-dimensional. This is the y-axis, y prime. And this is the z prime axis. And we have uh, That should be the y prime. No, it should be y. Okay. Um, yes. So now you have x uh, like that. Um, so you have your top like that, you have the center of mass over here. And so these, the distance from the origin where you're fixing the top to the center of mass, it's gonna be L. And you have gravity acting on the center of mass and it's going to be mg, just straight down. And this angle over here is theta. Okay, so the angular momentum. It's just um, the um, the operator and then the the angular velocity vector. So we know that this is I one omega one plus I two omega 2 plus i3 omega 3 uh, this is in the i direction j direction and k direction and you know because we aligned all the axes correctly this uh, operator is um, just 
is diagonal. So it is this matrix, or this tensor. <coughs> If the if the top is spinning really fast, then as I mentioned, L is going to be approximately equal to just this component. That'll be the uh, the magnitude. And it is aligned with the k direction. So k is uh, the unprimed system. The torque that is produced by gravity yep, the LDT and That is the torque. It's going to be R, capital R, which. The mass is the constant of the R, right? The second. The what? The second will be I2, right? Zero I2. This one? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But remember that we have the uh, I1 equals. One, two, different than I3 symmetry. So I guess this is a more general case. So we can, we can leave it like that. Um, so what is this? What is this torque? R, what else? Cross, what? Which force? The weight. The what? The weight. The weight. Okay. So actually, this is capital M. You know, we can assume that all the mass is in the center of mass, and this is the distance from the origin to the center of mass. So this one is going to be um, this is L. Hmm? Or R is going to be L, right? Yes, it's L in the k direction, and this one is mg in the negative. In the negative k prime direction. So we have a negative over here, so we can flip the order and um, it is a cross product, so we can take this one outside and then this one also outside. So it will be m g l is the magnitude and then inside we have k prime k hat prime cross k hat this is just an approach well I guess up to here it is it is uh, exact here we're going to make an approximation um, it's not that good but I guess it is fine. So we have this for the magnitude of L. So it'll be L3 in the k hat direction. So k hat is the magnitude of the, what is the angular momentum? Divided by L3. Um, this is a proxy. 
So we can put this one in here. V. This one is dividing one of them, so we can take it out of the cross product. And um, by looking at operator for for eighty six, we had DL DT system DL DT body plus omega cross L and if this angle theta is small then uh, this is pretty close to zero the uh, the torque in the body system of reference and so um, close to zero. In order for that to happen, it will have to be rotating uh, pretty fast, which is you know, like we said over here. And so what you can see is that this part over here is approximately this omega. Uh, this omega in the system uh, frame of reference is the is the precession, so it's what we called last time capital omega. So you know again this is an approximation, but the precession is going to be mgl divided by l three. So I'm just going to leave. Uh, this result up here and I'm going to actually yeah, maybe I can put it over here so I'm not using this space okay so we can this, so this was done with Newtonian mechanics. So let's see if we can do something more formal with um, Lagrangian mechanics. So we studied a very simple system last time. I guess the simplest possible that still has uh, interesting physics. So the torque was zero. There was no torque. And um, I1 was equal to I2 different than I3. Do we have anything else? I don't think so, right? This was it. So the system of equations that we have is this one. And we derived this one last time. N1, and then we have N2, and N3.
So because we have this symmetry, uh, this one is equal to zero, and so um, we had I3 omega 3 uh, dot equals zero, and three was zero. And so that means that the velocity, the angular velocity is constant. And doing that, we're able to simplify the system enough to solve it. So the next simplest case is we, I guess we can leave the more general I2, I, I, I1, I2, and I3. We can start, but this is not going to hold for a long time. We can start with omega one equals omega two equals zero. So there's no uh, rotation along x or y. And the torque is going to have only one component. It's going to be N1. N1, zero, zero. So then this one is going to be zero. And this one, two. W1, I mean, omega one and omega two are zero. And so initially, Initially, this term is zero, and this one too, and this one too. So this whole thing is zero, this whole thing is zero, this whole thing is zero. But you have a torque over here, and so uh, omega one, dot is not zero. So that means that omega one is going to start, it's, it's gonna to start to move. And so you know, the following instant after this, omega one is not zero anymore. So we have to remove that condition. And when that happens, this one, is not zero anymore. We have omega three, which is along the axis, and omega one. And this thing has to be uh, equal to zero. And so this one will start changing, and this one has to react to it. So I guess it depends on I3 and I1, but if this one starts moving up, this one start, has to move in the, in the opposite direction. And now you have omega two, not zero, omega two dot not zero. And so omega two will stop being zero. And then you have this one and Um, omega 3 is not 0, omega 1 was not 0 before, and so you have all of them in full swing. So it's kind of cool. So what is going to be the Lagrangian of this system? I guess what is the Lagrangian in general? Kinetic minus potential. Okay. The second equation, I don't understand why the torque is zero. Because we have the state of the only, only omega one and omega two are zero, right? Mm -hmm. So here, I don't understand why. This one? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I guess if you just look at the math, you'll have 
I2 omega dot equals negative omega 3 omega 1 I1 minus I3 and um, remember that you have all the components um, acting in every direction so this is along y right so it's a uh, direction number two um, and you have the first term which is responsive to direction number two but they also you know, it also has to respond to three and one same thing with this one that's why they can you know you put a torque in one direction and it's going to affect in general all of them so in order to keep these components you know being zero this one has to start moving to cancel out the uh, this torque that otherwise you will have what about the first one omega 2 is zero right this one yeah omega 3 and omega 3 yes you say omega 3 is zero Omega three is is the spin, so it has to rotate. Yeah, I'm saying that the first equation, omega two times omega three. Omega two omega three. Mm -hmm. um, so initially, this term is zero, the whole thing. Yeah. You don't have it, but because omega one is moving, omega one dot, that means that you have a velocity because it is being produced by this torque. And that velocity, um, angular velocity, moves omega one from zero to something that is not zero. And then this one, this term, is not zero anymore. And then you know it propagates through the equations. Yes? The other two angles can start moving, but uh, there won't be a Say that omega two starts moving right to cancel out these movements of this component. Uh huh. But uh, there is no torque. There is no torque. Okay. But you know because this is so. I don't know how to call it. It's very connected, right? Like you apply a torque in one direction and it affects everything. So the torque, you know, torques are complicated. Angular momentum is. Not, not complicated in the sense that it is, you know, it's difficult to understand, but the math, you know, just propagates through everything. Because it has these nonlinear terms. So, you know, if, if you don't believe it, <laughs> I suggest that you just go through it, just like I did. You know, it's like, which term is going to not be zero anymore? And then you'll see how it propagates to all of them. Okay, so the kinetic energy. It is one half ij omega j squared. And so if I1 equals I2 different than I3, and we derived this one last time. The kinetic energy is gonna be one half of I1 omega one squared omega two squared plus I3 omega three squared. Um, this is along the right track, but we need the directions to be, oh, we need the kinetic, en the kinetic energy to be in terms of the generalized coordinates, which in this case are the Euler angles, psi, theta, and phi. And 
Okay. So I'm gonna move through this kind of quickly. Just like we needed these three rotations to align the axis correctly, we have to do the same thing with the velocities. And so these, with the velocities, they're going to be um, infinitesimal rotations. So this is from chapter four. And So omega in the phi direction is phi dot. Omega in the theta direction is theta dot. And omega in the psi direction is psi dot. Omega phi is along uh, z prime. So sorry, it's about uh, z not prime, I'm prime, it's this one. So in order to bring it back to system coordinates, we need to apply the whole uh, transformation matrix a weekly and this one was equal to b weekly c weekly and d weekly and these ones were the rotation matrices in two dimensions um, but you know along different axes so a is given by equation 4.46 So you probably remember that it's a pretty nasty matrix. So when we apply it to omega phi, it's gonna look like some stuff over here, some stuff over here that we don't care about. This one is sine psi sine theta, uh, here we don't care, here we don't care, this one is cosine phi, sine theta, here we don't care, here we don't care, this is cosine theta. And we don't care about these ones because omega phi has a component only in its z axis. So this one is zero, zero, omega, phi. So this one is times zero, this one is times zero, and this one's two, this, this two also. And so omega, the, the result here is just um, so this is phi dot. Okay, so then it's just phi dot times this one plus, um, it's not plus, it's a vector. So this one is omega phi, but in the prime axis, so the system axis, and it's gonna be phi dot sine, psi, sine, theta, phi dot, cosine, psi, sine, theta, and phi dot, cosine, theta, okay. The next one, um, which is theta, 
it's this one over here. So you just need one knot. See this angle? So you need um, B wiggly. So that one is going to be. B wiggly was just a regular two-dimensional one. And the vector, this one is along uh, the x or the psi. I mean, yeah, psi. So this one is theta dot, zero, zero. And over here, we have the rotation matrix. weekly omega theta vector. So that one will be omega theta in the prime axis. Mm, that one is theta dot cosine phi, theta dot negative sine Sorry, psi, psi, and zero. And the last one, the psi one, you don't have to do anything. It's already aligned with the, with the z-axis once you go back. So that one is zero. Zero, side dot. Okay, so now you have your your um, the Euler angles. You can get them in terms of uh, wait x y and c. You can get it in terms of no. I mean this one is. Mm, Yes, so omega x or omega 1. Is this one times this one times this one. So that gives you psi dot sine theta sine psi plus theta dot cosine psi, and that's it. This one is dot sine theta cosine psi minus theta dot sine psi. Oh, I'm having trouble with the psi. Okay. And the third one is theta dot cosine theta and then nothing plus psi dot. So these are your three components of the uh, of omega in the system axis. So we can put the kinetic energy in terms of this. Um, I guess I erased it. You do the algebra and you end up with this expression. Kinetic energy is one half of I. Actually, uh, I'm going to put it over here.
So you cannot do much about I3. You know, it pretty much stays like that. You just have to only have the square of that. But for I1 and I2, they cancel out uh, nicely. So you end up with this expression, um, which is not too bad. So what about the potential energy? Yes. You were saying you would have had to do the terms of half I1 with the one squared plus and minus two squared. Um, did I get my house wrong? I3 times I3. There's a one half here. Um, yes, it is correct. So we, we didn't get this before in terms of the other angles. We got it in terms of uh, omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3. So I just substituted these ones in there, and this is the result. You actually simplified it with the 1 squared plus omega 2 squared in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, have, you get, uh, in one bracket, you get omega 1 squared plus omega squared so is this one squared times this one squared and you end up with I guess I can put like an intermediate term in here is one half of I1 this one you, you get the pi squared which is multiplying sine squared theta which is multiplying uh, sine uh, yeah, sine sin squared theta. This one is sine squared psi plus cosine squared psi. And so this one is just one, and you get the sine over here, uh, which is this one. And then the theta squared is, you know, the other term over here. Uh, for that one, you have a cosine here, which is going to be squared, and a sine here that is going to be squared. So this is also one. So you get the theta dot squared alone. But this one is, is correct. Um, it is the same as the book. It is equation 5.50. OK. Um, let me get the potential energy very quickly. We're going to use you know, what we had before uh, for the cross product. But instead of having a cross product, we have the dot product. So the potential energy is going to be the mass times uh, G. Uh, wait, it's going to be MR. So R is this vector, uh, dot G. Yes. Uh, so R and G, we did it before. Uh, that one is it's going to be M G L and inside of I guess the, the dot product is going to be K hat prime dot uh, K hat so K at prime is in this direction and k prime is in this direction so it's the angle between the two z axes which is theta so um, from the definition of that product this is just cosine theta k 
Okay, so this is the potential energy. So when we put it into Lagrangian, we have, oops, let's make this one to Lagrangian. Is this, um, oh, actually, I should not get rid of that. So minus MGL cosine theta. Okay, so we have um, the two components of the kinetic energy and then the, the, the potential energy over here. What it's important to notice is that um, we are missing a few coordinates there. Which ones? We have theta dot and theta. We have phi dot, but there's no phi, right? And we have psi dot, but there's no, there's no psi. So these are going to be the, uh, the constants of motion. Potential energy. So I want to know the direction of the where exactly the torque is applied on the line. What what exactly the where, where is the torque applied? The gravity. The torque? Yeah. Is it acting on the whole system or so you have uh, the fixed point over here and the center of mass is over here. And so uh, definition of torque is R cross force, right? So R is this vector from here to here, and that is the direction. And the force is down here, um, you know, just straight down. So if you, if we do it with the markers, R is from here to well, the center of mass. I guess it's going to be over here. And then gravity is straight down. So you can uh, get that angle, right? Uh, over here is the potential energy. So it's a dot product. So, so like, the getting the L cos theta, is it like the vertical components of the Component of the torque? Right, the vector component of the torque. Well, the torque is acting on the center of mass. On the center of mass. Yes, so um, actually, look at these ones. So there is no, there is no um, phi or psi. That means that the the momentum in phi is constant so that means that there is no torque along or about phi and there is no torque either about psi. So those angles, uh, phi is the, like the precession like this, and psi is like this. So there's only um, a torque about theta which is the one that makes with the, the angle with the, with the vertical. So it's, you know, it's kind of the example that we looked at the very beginning in, in which you had only one component or the torque was only along one direction. I was actually thinking that instead of using the definition for the torque, can you just like resolve it, like find the vertical component of the, the torque instead of using the definition? That will make it easy uh, 
Uh, here or in the well, torque? Yes, I think so. I think that's fine. I agree with you. All right, I'm going to stop over here. Um,